Recording in progress.
Здравствуйте, коллеги! Добро пожаловать в Якутск. Здесь продолжает свою работу четвертый Северный форум по устойчивому развитию. Деловая программа сегодняшнего дня продолжается мероприятием. Экспертная дискуссия, которая называется «Развитие науки и технологий в Арктике». Тема актуальна and of course it is very large and right now we are going to try to discuss which scientific uh, programs are being implemented in the arctic how uh, high qualified personnel is trained and how we can uh, attract specialists to the arctic and what joint efforts are required from the universities business and the authorities to support scientific research and development and we will try to touch upon uh, more topics so we are starting our expert discussion welcome to the audience and our speakers and now i would like to introduce the speakers next to me is the northeastern federal university rector 
Mr. Nikolaev. I wish to say welcome, but you should say welcome. Thank you for your hospitality. Also, we have the uh, Victor Dömen, first vice rector of National Research Tomsk State University, Mr. Labintsev, uh, the head of uh, laboratory of Kurchatov complex of nuclear transport energy technologies. Коммерческий директор компании Вездеходы Бурлак Роман Панкратьев. Роман Панкратьев, коммерческий директор Бурлак Оффроуд. И Жанна и я. Жанна Васильева, the head of department from Murmansk University. Also the uh, representative, the head of department of Murmansk University, Mikhail Vasyok. And also we have online speakers from TAS Press Center. We have uh, Director General of Rus Geotech Company, Igor Prokopyuk. I hope that you can hear us. Deputy Director uh, of Vnesh Econom Bank Institute of Research and Expertise, Yulia Zvarykina. And also Nikita Dobroslavsky, representing uh, Skolkova School. Well, finally, we can see you as well. And also we have uh, online the rector of Northern uh, uh, Arctic Federal University, Yelena Kudryshova. And uh, uh, welcome. And Pavel Medvedev, head of agency for property upkeep and land affairs of the Northern Directorate for Hydrometeorology and Environmental Monitoring. So now, dear colleagues, I would like to focus and to remind those uh, uh, who are not able to attend in person, you can watch online. They are broadcasted on the official website of the Northern Forum and uh, also in uh, conference section of TAS website and our page in ВКонтакте. So we have uh, quite a representative panel today, and we have about two hours for our discussion, although the topic is very large, and maybe we will not be able to discuss all the issues even if we had several days. But now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Nikolaev. What are the major tasks for the development of science and technology in the Arctic as long as you are the rector of the Northeastern Federal University? Mm. How demanded are these directions now? Because later we will discuss personnel training because uh, this profession is now in demand, and we will discuss it later. How topical is this issue? It is clear that uh, Yakutia is one of the most technologically advanced and developed regions in our country. So please share your priorities. Yes, thank you, Irina. Of course, for our university, it is one of the priorities, the research of uh, northern and Arctic territories, because we make one-fifth part of uh, Russia. Sometimes they calculate how many Francis there are in uh, uh, Yakutia, or we can compare to India. So for our territory, where we have less than 
one million people. The uh, research and science and personnel training is one of the priorities. Now, the university is quite well uh, represented in uh, the Arctic uh, area. Since last year, together with our co-regions from the uh, uh, northeast, like Chukotka, Sakhalin, Magadan, Kamchatka, we are now working within uh, North Scientific and Educational Center. But in addition to that, if I started to list all the projects that we are involved in, uh, it will take me several hours. But briefly, all our topics, they are focused on sustainable development and um, uh, living standards, primarily materials and technologies for the development of various industrial areas and living conditions like um, construction, metal constructions, um, uh, carbohydrates uh, um, extraction. Then we have a separate uh, domain for health and uh, genetics. And uh, we are quite advanced in uh, the development of uh, anti-cancer vaccine. We have been studying the health issues of Arctic residents for several decades now, and our young researchers are now researching the issues of aging in the North. And in the coming decades, uh, we are planning uh, to send our researchers to look for the DNA of mammoths, and I think that we are the only university that plans to reproduce uh, this relic animal, I mean mammoth. Lately, we have focused on humanitarian issues like the preservation of northern and indigenous languages and cultures. Only in Yakutia we have six indigenous languages, and some of them are now on the verge of extinction. So if we don't uh, study them at a large scale, uh, then they can just vanish. So now within the framework of Priority 2030 project, we see it as a strategic project together with our colleagues from the Russian Academy of Science at the level of artificial uh, intelligence and the synthesis of linguistics, genetics and archaeology. We will uh, move forward with the preservation and studying of languages. And to maintain the high level of our scientific research, we have good uh, links with our colleagues in the form of consortiums, for example, with um, Arkhangelsk, we cooperate uh, within the consortium. It helps us to train uh, new personnel. Then another uh, direction is uh, changes in permafrost and uh, uh, climate change. Because we understand that uh, thawing of permafrost may result in uh, uh, quite serious uh, 
problems and supported by our head, Mr. Nikolaev. We are going to apply for the establishment of uh, carbon polygons. I can speak long, so now I will give the floor to my colleagues. So thank you. If you have questions, then I will answer. Yes, thank you, Mr. Nikolaev. Talking about the consortiums, so let's try to move on with this topic. And uh, Viktor Demin, first vice rector of National Research Tomsk State University. If I'm not mistaken, last summer, it was for the first time you announced we had the news about the consortium Global Change of the Earth, Climate, Ecology, Quality of Life. And I think that we share common goals, so I wish to ask you to tell us about the experience of Tomsk University what has been done, what uh, are the objectives of the consortium, and uh, how the circumstances, different circumstances influence the work and the implementation of the goals. Thank you, Irina. Well, I think that you have already told everything. Yes, last year we established a consortium. What uh, do we call it, uh, the global uh, change of the earth? Because we are interested in uh, the rivers Op, Yenisei, Lena, Indigirka, Kalima, and the adjacent uh, Arctic Shelf, which is a huge territory. And uh, this is the territory where the most uh, dramatic changes are occurring. And uh, we focus on the carbon cycle in the Arctic system ground shelf, which is quite an under-researched domain, because uh, this is the point of uh, collaboration of uh, the Arctic Ocean and the Siberian rivers. And our project is one of the strategic projects of uh, Tomsk University Development Program. We have several blocks, the first one uh, on permafrost, then ground research, swamp research, and uh, tundra research, ocean research, and sea, uh, Arctic Ocean Sea research, then another block is the development of equipment and methods for monitoring and mediation, and of course the quality of life block where we do medical, uh, social and sociological research, primarily with the indigenous peoples of the north, and uh, like everyone, uh, like others, we have a block called car Carbon Polygon, and our expert Council has confirmed that uh, we have formed such polygon, uh, which studies the major features and properties of greenhouse gases. We have three station uh, stations. They are all uh, about 150 kilometers from each other. But we can synchronize what is being measured at these stations. And now we have some uh, um, monitoring rows that have been there for decades. Um, also, I wish to mention that monitoring is conducted by our colleagues from the air, from the sea, on the ground. We even have underwater holographic camera to research plankton. 
And uh, together with the leadership of Kamchatka and Sakhalin, we are discussing the establishment of underwater observatory for monitoring the uh, aquatorium, which is very important, of course, especially on such facilities as oil platforms, uh, uh, nuclear stations, oil pipelines, and gas pipelines. Uh, and uh, not uh, solve all these tasks alone. That is why we have established the consortium. And the members of the consortium, they locate in various uh, uh, spots of this territory. They include uh, our northern uh, federal university, northeastern, uh, Shershov, uh, University of uh, uh, Ocean Studies, Tomsk, uh, universities and institutes, and Krasnoyarsk. I just wanted to show that uh, the, the geography of the consortium. И, конечно, у нас сейчас основной проект рассчитан на 10 лет, поэтому, в общем, and the project is scheduled for 10 years, and we have to uh, produce serious um, uh, monitoring and observation results to collect uh, the necessary results and to offer them for constructing. Uh, the new ones, uh, the new climatic models, and uh, calculating or forecasting the consequences of um, global warming. They, these uh, estimations, they are very, very different from each other. Some, uh, they differ from you know, the range is from 10 to 60 trillion dollars. So the consortium has been operating for two years already, and in December we are going to hold the meeting of its council. We have conducted three ground expeditions, but basically they were along the rivers Ob River, Lena River, together with the uh, Yakutsk Permafrost Institute. And there was an expedition on the shore of uh, Barents Sea and uh, the expedition in the Arctic seas. And we are trying to make a puzzle, put it together, and um, uh, we collaborate with other consortiums, of course, and uh, I think that um, uh, Elena Kudryshova will tell uh, us about the work of uh, Northern Arctic Federal University. And uh, uh, you know about this uh, Russian-Asian Consortium for Arctic Research. And I hope that there we will intensively and efficiently um, create some projects with our Asian uh, colleagues and partners. I think that this has to be the main goal of this consortium. And uh, each consortium has its uh, like um, features and uh, uh, domains. And uh, we have agreed with the key consortiums that in 2023, in April, in Tomsk, we will hold a forum where we will convene all um, Arctic associations and consortiums for us to be able to exchange information about the domains and areas where all these consortiums and associations operate to make some single system to agree on some horizontal links. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dumin. Быстро, да? К нам присоединился министр инноваций, сферового развития и 
Minister of Innovation, Digital Development and IT, Mr. Simeonov. We know that you have a very tight agenda, but thank you for joining us because Yakutia is now holding a lot of different forums and meetings. And uh, this is to prove that uh, Yakutia is developing and there are a lot of areas for the development and uh, I wanted to ask you about the digital development of Yakutia. What are the key uh, areas for you as a supervising minister because we discuss uh, science and technology in the Arctic. So what are you focusing on where is the vector of your development taking into account the circumstances? What are your solutions to look for new Partners. Yes, good afternoon, dear colleagues. It's a pleasure to be a panelist with such high rank and esteemed people. Another opportunity to share my ideas and to hear some interesting thoughts. We split our uh, directions in uh, several levels. The first one is infrastructure, because our republic is vast, 3 million square kilometers, and the population density is low, and this is a barrier for our development, because oh, we only have 30% of all-year transportation in uh, our republic, and we have some challenges in terms of uh, energy and uh, aviation. And uh, my domain is uh, communication, because uh, through the digitalization, uh, our head of our republic sees the manageability of the republic, which is confirmed by the pandemic and by the uh, wildfires. So we have agreed that uh, uh, before the end of 2025, we should uh, 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 provide high-speed internet to all uh, regional centers. Now we have uh, uh, internet in uh, Saskalach, which is on the shore of the Arctic Ocean and supported by Mr. Shadaev and the Russian Ministry of uh, Communication. We, we will provide internet to our settlements and then to Chukotka and Bilibina and then to Northern Sea Route. And there is a sea cable on the bottom of the sea and we will reach for Magadan Oblast and the north of Khabarovsk. So this is going to be um, uh, some sort of uh, territorial connection, and uh, it will make our communication more reliable and faster. Because if we talk about satellites, satellite communication, all our receivers, they are uh, foreign but uh, uh, our commutators for the internet, they are Russian-made. And Mr. Shadaev uh, mentioned that we have, that under sanctions, we have to develop our own technologies and it will support our own uh, uh, plans. And through digitalization, we will develop medicine education, internet sales and services and others. Because after infrastructure, we work on the development of human resources. IT uh, area has been developing 
uh, its IT for the last decade. And we aim to give 10,000 jobs in IT area and we are uh, opening uh, the new IT centers in different locations. For example, today we are launching a new IT center in Tixi. And we have quite a lot of partners in spite of the sanctions. We have partners in China and Southeast Asia. We are continuing to export uh, products. And together with the university, we have opened a Graphene uh, Labs Design Center. And uh, next year we are opening a center for the production of oxide graphene. And this is not just import substitution. This is like an advancement. I think that we have to move forward and to produce something that would uh, provide us the technological uh, sovereignty. In the future, сегодня находясь в стенах университета, я сказал бы, что вот та экосистема республиканская, they wouldn't be possible if we hadn't the university. So the fact that we have the university in Yakutsk, it allows us to be like confident because this scientific component and personal component they are secured by our university it's not only microelectronics or robototechnics uh, we are now working on launching the program on the development of unmanned transportation together with the post of Russia and the Environment Protection Ministry. Because uh, we uh, have a lot of tasks that can be solved with this unmanned uh, devices. And I would like to invite everybody to join our um, center of competence. So we have quite a lot of uh, different uh, domains and areas, including the alternative energy sources. So, uh, for the Republic, taking into account our, uh, as long as for us, uh, our Republic stimulates us to uh, solve the tasks uh, for creating the demand. Uh, in December, we are going to hold a mining forum, and we will convene a lot of companies. I, and I think now it's high time for the companies that locate here. They have to organize this internal demand because uh, they also some they have some challenges uh, because of the sanctions and uh, we are now closely cooperating with uh, Al Rosa company and together with Technopark residents we are going to solve them and these tasks they are quite good and then can they can be upscaled to some large mining companies the tasks are complicated, but they are interesting. So, uh, what's the problem with innovations? Uh, these programs, they are always long-term programs, and not everybody is ready to work on such a long-term uh, uh, prospects. But we are lucky that uh, uh, Mr. Nikolaev looks forward and uh, he is ready to invest in something that will ben that produce some benefits uh, like in 10 years. So this science, education and innovation, they are very long-term uh, initiatives, but uh, we are lucky that our head 
supports us. Yes, thank you, Mr. Semyonov. Uh, if you have to go, then uh, please go. But if you can stay, please stay. We know your tight schedule, so thanks again. You have touched upon the topic of personnel training, because we can talk and discuss the projects and their relevance. But somebody has to implement all these projects with their heads and hands and technologies and uh, some developments. So the block of personnel training, and we will start with Yulia Zvarykina, Deputy Director of Vneshekonom Bank Institute of Research and Expertise. Новые технологии подготовка кадров для Арктики. Насколько охотно young specialists uh, willing or people who take retraining uh, to work uh, in the Arctic. So there is demand for the personnel, but what, what about supply? So to what extent young people are interested in studying the Arctic. So the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon for letting me to talk today. As we are online, I would like to be brief. Indeed, today uh, the Arctic uh, imposes ambitious uh, possibilities for educational institutions. Since the technologies change uh, very quickly, and uh, sometimes we uh, cannot keep up with uh, the needs and to adapt our curriculum. For example, over the pandemic, a number of technologies uh, advanced uh, tremendously and we heard about them at a number of conferences held recently. And one of the most uh, interesting things are energy security, food security, uh, hydrogen and alternative fuels. And among uh, alternative fuels, uh, e-fuel is a particular interest. And we, uh, we have quite few uh, programs for training specialists in these areas. We don't have uh, any standards uh, developed uh, to ensure the safety of using these fuels, fuels like hydrogen, so this is a completely different uh, volume of fuel in, uh, in vehicles, for example. And uh, our scientists uh, and uh, research institutes have very good practices developed, actually, which are to be introduced into educational process. So our young people are ambitious to work in most uh, advanced uh, areas uh, with high salaries and, and this makes uh, those uh, areas very attractive for young people. 
То есть And then the curricula focused on engineering programs will be in demand. Но вот отмечаю, что пока нет достаточных компетенций. However, so far there is not enough competence on ensuring safety of using such fuels. Это очень важно. И второй вопрос, который я хотела бы затронуть, to discuss uh, it has been mentioned already here for the Arctic. Besides alternative energy sources and fuels, the study of permafrost construction on permafrost and maintenance of buildings in the permafrost. I'm sure this topic will be discussed today. Сейчас реализуется проект ДНК России, готовятся программы основы российской государственности, и вот здесь как раз именно арктические регионы могут внести свой особый вклад. Это не только языки коренных народов, это культурный код, который недостаточно, на мой взгляд, пока присутствует в широкой повестке, несмотря на Летиями накопленный опыт э, жизни и выживания в Арктике коренных народов, он и создает э, ту основу, the millennial-long experience of indigenous people living in the north can lay foundation for development of Arctic sustainable systems. In this system, they can ensure health and prosperity and well-being of people living in the Arctic. And now the task of the scientists is not only fundamental science and not only technological breakthrough, but we also must realize that Russia is this center is something uniting Europe and Asia, and it's also uh, civilization of its own, and we need to, un uh, to inform young people about this. So thank you very much. Спасибо вам большое, Юлия Викторовна. Продолжим мы тему подготовки кадров и перенесемся в стены Северного федерального университета. Елена Владимировна, вам позвольте все слово предоставить. В чем согласитесь с коллегой и что дополните относительно подготовки кадров для Арктики, востребованности, популярных направлений? Расскажите чуть подробнее на своем примере. What are the Коллеги, popular programs? Yes, I hear. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I would like to greet everyone from Arkhangelsk, from which is home to the Arctic. Северный Арктический Федеральный Университет является, наверное, крупнейшим в зоне Российской Федерации. Сам Петербургский а именно Арктику, территорию Арктическую, и Арктическую, и Last year, Prime Minister of the Russian Federation approved the strategic program of our university for 15 years, which is in line with the Russian strategy in the Arctic until 2035. Improved life stand, living standards. They are linked to the development of the of the economy, including the Northern Sea Route. And we understand that to achieve those goals, we must train personnel and keeping people here in the north. Понимаем, что кадры здесь нужны. Мы понимаем, что мы имеем unique uh, specialist here, very professional, uh, but also able to survive uh, under harsh conditions. 
and for the quality training of professionals for joint scientific research, for supporting young specialists, and to keep young specialists working in the North. In 2016, the Arctic Research and Educational Consortium was established. And today, our university is a chair in this consortium, so this consortium unites uh, over 40 educational and research institutions in Russia, and so also unions of uh, employees. And so we have undertaken uh, the uh, function, functions of the U-Arctic. Uh, after uh, the known, uh, events, Russia is not part of the U-Arctic anymore. And when you... Uh, if you aren't, uh, enter the site of this university, you uh, wouldn't see uh, any mentioning of uh, the Russian institutions. Uh, but uh, your Arctic was actually initiated by Russia as uh, an organization of the Arctic Council, and uh, many research networks uh, were also initiated by the Russian party. So now our national uh, consortium uh, has undertaken uh, and took over the functions of uh, the UOCTIC and is now developing and working with the net research networks in our country. Uh, and along with uh, Petrozavodsk State University, uh, uh, have been participating uh, in the study, in this survey, uh, to what extent uh, the young professionals uh, correspond to the requirements of employers. Uh, we have uh, carried out uh, over 10,000 uh, interviews with employers, and we uh, identified by 2035 Due to implementation of a number of uh, business and educational processes, there will be uh, open uh, 30,000 of uh, jobs, and we have uh, prepared the atlas of uh, promising uh, professions, uh, including uh, new ones. So, which are about to appear, for example, specialists on constructing sites under uh, melting conditions, specialists uh, in uh, comprehensive safety of Arctic navigation, specialists uh, in development of uh, Arctic shelf, underground mining and transportation of uh, carbon hydrates, uh, specialists in Arctic telemedicine, uh, uh, Arctic uh, environmentalists, uh, and I continue this list of ar new Arctic professions. And of course, this uh, new demand uh, requires new curriculum. So first of all, we need to develop our programs uh, together with employers. And, uh, 
In our branch in Severodvinsk, we still continue the Soviet tradition of vocational school, university. And also our graduates, they are immediately hired by our partner enterprises. So 100% uh, of uh, our students are employed. Ну и отметим, что среди вообще выпускников САФО из всех трудоустроенных 78% of our graduates in general uh, remain in the active zone of the Russian Federation in Arkhangelsk Oblast, in Murmansk Oblast, in Minnesota The second feature is interdisciplinary nature of education. For example, for uh, tra uh, trail uh, fishery, because production of uh, marine uh, pro products, aquaculture is one of the priorities. So vessels uh, are so complex now, and they require uh, new professionals. So they must be interchangeable, and also they must be able to use uh, to apply the capabilities uh, to different types of vessels. Uh, equipped with uh, IA elements, IT elements. The third feature for training specialists for the Arctic is network cooperation with leading uh, educational and research institutions and uh, also companies uh, working in the Russian Arctic and who are, or who are planning to work in the Russian Arctic. So this is the use of, uh, extensive use of distant learning techniques uh, because the territory of the Arctic is huge. And we need to use IT technologies since uh, kindergartens. A couple of uh, weeks ago, uh, we presented our project Digital Arctic, which is uh, going to be hopefully a digital hub for education in the Arctic. Another important direction Экспедиционные исследования. Uh, is, вот в нашем uh, случае многие члены принимают участие в консорциуме в нашем университете. Uh, Поэтому проект есть в Арктик Флотинг университете, который имеет 10-летнюю историю, и каждый год студенты и школьники приезжают из более чем 60 университетов из России. Uh, foreign uh, institutions, they uh, set off uh, to sail uh, in the Arctic Ocean around Svalbard and other northern archipelagos and to do uh, Arctic research uh, on the commission of uh, Rus Hydromet and other Russian companies. And this is a unique opportunity to listen to interesting lectures, to participate in uh, scientific discussions, and do research of their own, supervised by leading scientists, and then to see the, their results published And over the, the past 10 years, the Russian Geographical Society uh, has been supporting this project. And, um, An important trend here today is the work of the career centers. 
And our university also has such a center. And so the purpose of this center is to establish relations between students and future employers and to help our graduates to find jobs in, in a new territories. Indeed, uh, there are uh, a number of leading uh, institutions working to serve the Arctic. This is our university, and this is the uh, uh, Murmansk Arctic uh, Institute, Murmansk Technological Institute. So they have decided to unite, and now they are going to be Murmansk Arctic University and universities in Sukhivkar and Petrosavodsk and my colleagues from the Tomsk State University, from Northeastern Federal University. We cooperate uh, with all of them and we initiate some joint projects. And I'm sure that uh, our association uh, have developed very useful practices which we can share with our colleagues. And it is obvious that today the Arctic is a very important geopolitical region along the, 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 the Russian Far East, despite all the, uh, the circumstances, all the projects uh, will be implemented, uh, uh, the goals reached, and uh, to do so, we need professionals. Thank you, Ilyana. Uh, personal training is uh, science by itself. So we continue our discussion. I would like to give the floor to Mr. From the Kurchatov complex of nuclear transport energy technologies. So in training personnel is very important. So what uh, scientific achievements uh, can be used to uh, explore remote areas with harsh conditions? Uh, what uh, are peculiarities here and uh, what are the prospects for energy projects here? Uh, dear colleagues, I would like to say that uh, the Yakut land is uh, very beneficial, and for the entire Russia, it's uh, valueless, and it's an ideal platform for implementing new technologies. I, uh, actually have worked in Yakutia this year. We are just back from the field trip, uh, and uh, I'm again here. My colleagues uh, talking about uh, training personnel, uh, haven't talked about one important aspect, and this is the law on indigenous peoples of the North. And any technical project uh, to be implemented here, besides environmental expertise, is to pass uh, ethnographical expertise. And uh, only after passing such expertise, the both of the expertise, this project can be implemented here. And, um, talking about the law on indigenous peoples of the north, all new technologies uh, aimed at the Arctic, they should uh, 
именно с привлечением представителей численных народов. Это очень важно устойчивого развития северных территорий. Надо отметить, что любое развитие, особенно в наш современный век, оно не может тем более устойчивое развитие, оно не может проходить без энергетической обеспечения. Работая здесь, фактически в рамках постановления правительства 17.05 от и убедились в массе особенностей, которые характерны для этих мест. Нужно сказать, что теплотворная способность углеводородного топлива, планируется использоваться далее, его очень часто не хватает. Not enough. Теплотворной способности не хватает именно с точки зрения того, что Согласно упомянутому правительству, подписанного Михаилом Мишустином, планируется к реализации три проекта. So we are planning three projects. Реактор установки Ритм 200М, это Усть-Куйга. Соответственно, еще два проекта. Проект атомной станции малой мощности на основе Шельф-М. Проект Елена. Елена Проект. Также хотелось бы сказать, что мы в свое время остановились буквально на пороге подписания решения о строительстве атомной станции малой мощности проекта Елена в поселке Кюсюр. So we, uh, have almost agreed to build a small scale nuclear power station in Болонске district. We were about to sign this, but then the Soviet Union collapsed. So we see that actually geopolitical changes they affect the power industry as well. Выполняя большой комплекс работ, мы посетили самые труднодоступные наследия республики Сахалинский в Болонский district. Проводя открытый урок в Таймаларской школе. Мне была сказана такая фраза, уважаемые школьники, я обращаю Because uh, now the struggle for the, the battle for the Arctic uh, has started. And talking about the Arctic, uh, the Kurchatov Institute is developing uh, power stations uh, which uh, can ensure power generation in the area for many years ahead которые разрабатываются Курчатским институтом, позволяют обеспечить населенный пункт to a certain settlement for 25 years. So in fact, the составляет 25 лет, четверть века. Это фактически она рассчитана на поколение людей. То есть фактически за 25 лет родится и станет полузрелым целое поколение. Также э, со своей стороны хотел добавить, что благодаря президенту Курчатского института Николаевичу были достигнуты нами все цели и задачи. Надо сказать, что благодаря его неуемной энергии, его государственному делу, 
Мы получили поддержку на всех уровнях и фактически огромный комплекс работ. И благодаря перспективам развития северных территорий. В целом, So that's Спасибо. All. Да, благодарим вас. Thank you. Uh, благодарю вас, Владимир Васильевич. Uh, Жанна Вячеславовна, вам позвольте слово предоставить. <coughs> Вы знаете, вот, like uh, uh, говорим мы, естественно, про науку и технологии. Жанна. Сформулирую я так вопрос в вашу сторону. Uh, как, развивая um, и реализуя проекты научного, технологического характера для развития, ну, будем говорить, арктических территорий, соблюсти правильный баланс и, э, и чтобы экологическая составляющая so э, как, как правильно вот, э, не забыть об этом How, вот, вот, чтобы вы э, как эксперт порекомендовали expert, э, тем кто those... ну, экология вот, вообще вся наша жизнь это касается любой сферы нашей Ecology жизни All our life, and it touches upon any area of our life. It's where we live, what we eat, what we breathe. So, in this rapid development of scientific and technological potential and the implementation of large-scale projects, How can we observe this balance of uh, environment with what resources, what we should remember? Спасибо за возможность поприсутствовать на этом мероприятии. Спасибо организаторам. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak. This issue is quite complicated and conceptual. And I think that we should answer in particular because currently, of course, the development of the Arctic has to be tightly connected with the environmental issues and the minimum impact on the environment and the mitigation of the existing impact uh, in terms of industry and the social development. I represent Murmansk Technical University, who has a wide pool of research related to this issue. Our region, just like uh, region where we are is the industrial region where a lot of enterprises, mining enterprises and bioresources enterprises and transportation enterprises are concentrated. And we have a lot of environmental problems that we deal with. And uh, we are ready to offer some solutions and help those who engage in this activity. We closely cooperate with the industrial enterprises of our oblast and the scientific and research uh, institutions. We work with Petrozavodsk and Arkhangelsk. And of course, we have common uh, issues related to monitoring research, uh, to evaluate the environmental impact. We are now using uh, drones in monitoring and uh, various uh, software complexes that um, allow for integrated evaluation of environmental impact. And the new area that we are now mastering is the evaluation of climatic impact in the area of Northern Sea Route using satellites. Unfortunately, satellites that are now in the Arctic, they are mostly foreign. We are still using Canadian systems. But the processing of this data uh, allows us to address our 
foreign colleagues who say that uh, Russian impact on the environment is very high, but we can show the, the results to our colleagues and to give adequate uh, assessment. So we can reject and to correct them, which is confirmed by satellites. Uh, also, we work on uh, producing the technologies to mitigate uh, uh, pollution, primarily these uh, spills in the Arctic and the creation of technologies to mitigate the pollution and uh, rehabilitate uh, Arctic fragile ecosystems and to restore them. And uh, we hope that we can find colleagues uh, who are ready to cooperate, and we have found some colleagues in Yakutsk, because it is also important for them, and they have some interesting results. And, of course, another important issue that we have been underestimating is the issue of developing new nature protection regulations for the Arctic, because we have to take into account the peculiarities of adaptation of Arctic systems to economic impact and anthropogenic and technogenic risks that may occur. And here I should say and support the colleagues that uh, who have spoken before. We have to be in advance. We have to develop our own concepts, thoughts, and proposals that uh, could be globalized, however strange it may sound, because uh, we are now offering new approaches and new opportunities. Uh, now we are creating a new standard of green uh, construction in the Arctic. And here we would seek the support and the consulting from our uh, Yakut uh, uh, colleagues, because they are very experienced in uh, uh, constructing on permafrost. I could uh, speak uh, for a long time. Maybe we could uh, uh, discuss it uh, in a separate meeting. But what uh, uh, makes me glad is that um, everybody who is now working with the Arctic, they are tasked with preserving this fragile environment and uh, harmonious development of techniques and technologies and settlements and commercial enterprises in the Arctic. Uh, so that uh, while we are developing, we don't uh, uh, destroy anything for the Arctic to become our second home, because Arctic is Russia, it is our country. Now let's uh, move to Moscow to Center of Sustainable Development of Skolkovo School, Nikita Dobroslavsky. So, uh, Mr. Dobroslavsky, what are you focusing on in terms of developing science and technology in the Arctic? Who are other colleagues that uh, you would like to cooperate with? Please share your experience, what directions you are developing now. So the floor is yours. Hello. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. First of all, I would like to touch upon the issue of um, decarbonization in the Arctic, whether we need it or not, because I have heard a lot that uh, now we have some challenges. And we have to tackle these challenges. So now, if we spend money on decarbonization, should we do it or not? 
But uh, I have two points here. Decarbonization is what we need. Not only because we have uh, melting ice and uh, methane is being thrown out and the temperature is rising. But we have to understand that our country is based on expert and it will be based on expert because we have Asia, Latin America, uh, Asian Pacific countries, Africa, etc. And we will cooperate with them. And now, as you know, transboundary carbon tax is now being developed in the world, and uh, all this story is now very topical in the European Union. And uh, the partners of EU, such as China and India, they will also introduce their uh, analog to this tax to protect their producers. And uh, this ESG and climatic agenda in the world is now boosting. So for our products to be competitive, we need to adhere to decarbonization and energy transfer. Sколково School has conducted various research in decarbonization on macro level and uh, international agenda and uh, decarbonization of transport, you can visit our website and read about it. We used to closely cooperate with various international universities in Norway and uh, Finland on the development of the Arctic within the Arctic Council and uh, the Arctic Economic Council. But unfortunately, due to this uh, geopolitical situation, uh, we have stopped such communications, but we hope that in cooperation with Russian Arctic uh, universities, we could develop our uh, research agenda and educational agenda. So uh, I think we should probably think about establishing some sort of um, association of educational institutions in Russia, not only on uh, with the Arctic universities, but also with like, different Russian universities and uh, institutes that are not directly related to the Arctic, but their engagement is necessary. I think that uh, I would like to conclude with um, the fact that without digitalization we cannot uh, decarbonize. So what is decarbonization? It's not only when we switch from cars to bikes. But this is also a very complicated and uh, uh, scientific, intensive technology. 
Even such technologies as uh, catching CO2 I think that only the G7 countries uh, have this technology. And unfortunately, by many parameters, Russia is uh, behind the technology. And we have bought all these technologies from the West. And now we are challenged with where we can buy these technologies. Because even such partners as China and India, they don't uh, possess uh, these technologies fully. But uh, I can also see some positive prospects for us. Uh, because uh, Western countries, they will not be able to develop their decarbonization without uh, Russia, because uh, all Mendeleev table uh, is uh, available in Russia. And to produce the techniques and to preserve the energy, to store the energy, uh, all metals, they were bought in Russia and uh, without... Uh, our country, the cost of these metals is going to grow drastically, which will make it uh, inefficient to continue this energy transfer. Just to remind that to produce the chips, we need uh, various uh, gases that are mostly shipped uh, and from Russia. So I think that we will find some common points and agree with the West for some exchange, maybe. We give you mineral resources for you to produce your systems, and you will give us the technologies. But uh, certainly, we have to make a great uh, leap, and we are absolutely short of time. But I think we have uh, the capabilities for this leap in terms of uh, personnel and technology. But we have to understand that it will not be tomorrow. It would be good if we could make it by 2030. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nikita. Let's get back to Yakutsk. I would like to give the floor to Roman Pankratiev, commercial director of Burlak of Road. So briefly, what do you do? And we understand that without scientific, technological and innovative developments, the goals that you have already uh, achieved would be impossible. So how do you do this and uh, what are your machines for? Good afternoon again. I wanted to tell you about what we do. So the novelty of our machine is that uh, this is a new niche and a new class of uh, wheel uh, all-terrain machines. And our peculiarity is that we have a very high uh, mm, cargo capacity. This is the uh, peculiarity of our off-road trucks. We are now producing in Kurgan, and uh, we are Mm, now growing the number of our machines, and we plan to increase it to 30 items a month. So our all-terrain vehicle uh, is more than uh, seven meters long and uh, almost three meters uh, wide. 
It's an amphibia all-terrain vehicle, and it can combine up to five uh, uh, kinds of all-terrain vehicles. We have certificates for 13 modifications of um, um, off-road uh, vehicles. Burlak is a universal uh, um, all-terrain uh, vehicle. We have uh, created our vehicle for the Arctic. Uh, we have uh, produced it from scratch. It had no analogs and uh, uh, the concept was absolutely new, and this is a useful model made from some known solutions, of course, but we have uh, produced it from scratch uh, to be used in the Arctic. And a number of some constructive solutions and the materials that we use prove that, of course, here we have a lot to do and uh, we will continue our work. Mm, as for the uh, properties of the materials that we use for our machines, uh, yes, a number of uh, our uh, contractors, they agreed to change the um, composition of their materials. And we are glad about it because we use some uh, cold-resistant steel and glass, but we still have a lot to work on, and we have the materials. For example, we have some heaters that cannot be uh, certified because uh, they have uh, no proper fuel, but, uh, well, this is an issue to discuss, but according to some of our colleagues, they need a minimum temperature of uh, 60 degrees below zero. And uh, we also have some scientific research within uh, Ural's uh, Scientific and Educational Center. We cooperate on the properties of materials and on some training programs. We understand that we have to uh, improve uh, the uh, professional competences of our engineers. And as long as our machines are unique, we have to have some uh, training programs for uh, training our customers to use these techniques and the efficiency of using these techniques. And also wanted to say that uh, uh, for our car, we have our own uh, model of tires, which allows to use the machine uh, during summer, and uh, it makes the, the use of our machine environmentally friendly. Uh, so the pressure, uh, ground pressure is uh, 0 0.12 kilos uh, per centimeter, which is safe for Tundra, unlike uh, using the truck techniques. And uh, compared to truck techniques, we uh, consume much less fuel, which is, of course, more environmentally friendly. And it is also a subject for some joint activities. And uh, also, together with our partners, we are now working on such options as uh, uh, options for engines. For example, with our partners uh, from Tatarstan, we are working on the option of uh, non-engine burlak, uh, working on uh, uh, liquefied natural uh, gas. And uh, I think that maybe next year we will be able to show the, uh, like this, the sample 
of such machine and also we are working on the option of a hybrid uh, car. Uh, another option is the option with uh, active truck. So this uh, electric uh, transmission is one of the promising areas for the development of our uh, uh, off-road vehicle. And uh, we're talking about this technological sovereignty and import substitution. So tell us, are you using Russian technologies or what? Well, to begin with, our machine is like, highly localized. And the share of foreign parts is not substantial. Of course, there are some parts that cannot be substituted, but we are working on that. We are using now this uh, parallel import. Unfortunately, there is no uh, Russian-made uh, engine with uh, proper uh, characteristics. And we are using Chinese uh, engines. And these engines, they are quite widespread. In Russia, gas company has also used them. That's why we opted for this engine. But we already understand that this uh, issue has to be solved and we are working on that by uh, developing this electrical transmission and gas modification of the engine. And we are also considering some other options. But we are, uh, yes, we are working on them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. To continue discussing the mining and transportation of energy resources in the Arctic. And to continue our panel discussion, I would like to give the floor the, the floor to uh, Mikhail from Murmansk Technical University. Нацеленность общества на декарбонизацию, отказа от нефти и газа не предвидится в ближайшие годы от слова совсем. И Арктика, мы знаем, это богатая кладовка, в которой... And uh, today, the Northern uh, Federal University's rector mentioned uh, new professions. So here, mm -hmm. we are here in Yakutia today, and uh, I would like to outline the range of the issues uh, we uh, train in and related to the, this territory. So one of our directions is studying logistics in the Arctic. Uh, in particular, uh, we study the potential of northern uh, Siberian rivers, which could be used uh, for major oil and gas projects. And they, their potential is still underestimated. So uh, the voyages of uh, vessels uh, along uh, the inland uh, rivers and then to the Northern Sea route uh, will uh, bring uh, cargoes to major uh, mining projects. 
So oil and gas companies are drivers of the economic growth and and uh, the experts of uh, oil and gas uh, is done by existing uh, logistics schemes, uh, basically uh, through uh, the port of Murmansk. And uh, LNG uh, flow also goes th through Murmansk. But the potential of Siberian uh, lakes to supply uh, major oil and gas projects, this topic uh, hasn't been studied yet. For example, uh, the Op River. In the Soviet times, they used to deliver 40 million tons of cargoes. And now, uh, uh, the goal for the Northern Sea Road is 80 million tons. We see that the Op River alone actually covered the half of this demand. So, Yakutsk is uh, situated on the Lena River, uh, which is could be also used uh, to supply uh, major projects on licensed areas uh, of uh, Gazprom and Rosneft uh, in the West Siberian, East Siberian Sea and in the Sea of Chukotka. So I think we, we need some collaboration to study this uh, issue. And uh, we are open to such cooperation. So, in who in particular? Uh, so, what structures, uh, what partners? Uh, the Lena River Shipping Company, for example. Uh, maybe some uh, scientists here at, uni at this university, from some uh, central universities. We used to cooperate with Norwegians, but now this cooperation is uh, over because Norwegians were keenly interested uh, in logistics in the Arctic, and they uh, studied uh, uh, the situation on our uh, uh, oil fields uh, and gas fields uh, a lot. They uh, prepared their thorough analysis and uh, which our scientists usually don't uh, do. So we need uh, to, to develop our logistics because this uh, industry is going to remain one of the drivers of the economy in the region. So we have two more presentations who have been waiting for a long time. So, uh, Pavel, uh, the floor is yours from the Hydra Material, Pavel Medvedev from uh, Hydra Material, uh, Northern Directorate for Hydrometeorology and Environmental Monitoring. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I work for the Northern Directorate for Hydrometeorology and Environmental Monitoring. So we have a network of uh, stations uh, in the remote areas of the Arctic. And for the second years, uh, we have been uh, deploying uh, solar panels on, at these remote uh, meteorological stations. And 
его необходимость. Uh, carbon hydrate, uh, hydrates uh, and also to reduce the cost of delivering uh, fuels and also minimize the impact on the environment. And from one kilowatt of uh, install capacity, you can uh, get one megawatt uh, of power in uh, a year. So, for example, a hybrid uh, power station we are using. So it's a, a combined solar uh, diesel uh, generator station, and it can provide energy to almost any region in, of our country. So you can multiply the major components of this system, and it consists of a solar panel of uh, a battery, and the solar battery converts the energy into uh, electric energy and uh, convectors, they uh, transform the energy to that usable by consumers. And uh, the install capacity can be from 100 to thousands of kilowatts. And uh, you can have uh, different configurations uh, depending on the size uh, and the demand. And the major components of such hybrid solar stations uh, is as follows. Uh, the solar station uh, is designed uh, According to the demand, uh, and it produces alternative current uh, in the conditions of uh, insufficient insulation. It is based on photogalvanic transformation of solar energy. And, uh, this energy is accumulated uh, in the uh, batteries and then is converted into by inverters uh, and, uh, given the daily statistics uh, we have the experience of using the, uh, the station island they delivered about 15 tons of fuel to this island from uh, mid-March to mid-September, uh, this uh, settlement is, uh, gets all the energy from the uh, solar panels only. And uh, in winter, uh, the diesel generator is used. So when batteries run flat, uh, the diesel switch is on. So this reduces the consumption of fuel, and also the diesel generator works more evenly. In the Arctic areas, uh, very often uh, we have a peak uh, peaks of consumption, uh, which negatively affect uh, the uh, performance of diesel generators, and resulting in the uh, uh, breaking down. So the при оптимальной работе дизель-генератора дополнительные 10-30 процентов топлива. И потом на территории арктической зоны. Оптимизация расходов на завоз. 
So again, uh, the use of hybrid uh, solar stations uh, saves uh, on fuel consumption, delivery of uh, fuel, uh, minimal uh, environmental uh, impact. This year, uh, we installed seven solar panels uh, with a solar capacity of 10-15 kilowatts. And, uh, the, these locations uh, get all the energy from those stations. And the, Accumulate, uh, the excess energy is accumulated, and the, when there is no, not enough uh, energy in the batteries, then diesel generators are switched on. And with more even uh, load on the equipment, we can uh, extend the efficient operation of uh, the facility. So then uh, the uh, personnel uh, has uh, less workload. And so also solar panels, they, 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 the generation of solar panels uh, is almost noise-free, unlike the diesel generators. This is again reduced stress. So, and now I'm ready to answer your questions. Thank you, Pavel. We have uh, one more presentation and probably we'll have more uh, remarks. So Igor Prokopiuk, Director General from uh, Rus Geotech uh, Company. So we are going to Moscow again. I know that you are going to talk about very important topic. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, thank you for inviting me to the forum for the opportunity to talk. I will be brief. Uh, there is no need to introduce our company, Rusgeotech, because our products uh, have been sold uh, throughout Russia for several years. Yes, and this, uh, while our wireless technologies of data transmission uh, now are added with satellite technologies, so we developed a system of temperature control for um, monitoring uh, buildings built uh, constructions in permafrost, so we focus on uh, remote Sites. But today I would like to talk about different things. Uh, today the focus of our discussion uh, has been uh, extensive development of the Arctic. We understand that this proactive uh, development must be safe. Uh, safe development нормативной документации, которая будет регламентировать uh, деятельность хозяйственной сферы. Uh, и мы провели исследование нормативной документации, и пришли к выводу, что нормативные акты, которые регламентируют температурный мониторинг, они в настоящий момент не соответствуют требованиям, которые предъявляют Арктик. So that especially dangerous uh, facilities uh, which are built specifically and maintained specifically, uh, they get the same monitoring uh, as the objects which are less risky. So uh, we can uh, send uh, the results of our survey to the organizers of the forum. 
Probably I don't need to report our results because it's going to be long and also it's going to raise lots of questions. But we are ready to work with the organizers of the forum and send our proposals to be included probably in the resolution of the forum. И в Государственную Думу, и в правительство для обсуждения then, uh, возможности внесения нормативных рекомендаций. Я думаю, что Большое спасибо за внимание. Yes, I would like to, uh, to add, yes, that uh, you can have very useful time uh, not only during the public discussions, but uh, off stage, and uh, because you have people from different areas, and you can meet people, and also you can identify some points of joint interests and prospects for future cooperation. And events like this, they promote events, promote cooperation. I think we have some remarks. I would like to comment uh, on... You were talking about the, the potential of Siberian rivers when we worked here in Yakutia, and probably this is the, the answer to one of your questions. Uh, we uh, work directly with the Ministry of Transport of the Republic, Mr. Sivtsev, and uh, I would like to say the navigation at certain uh, rivers here is only two weeks long, so which uh, explains the difficult access to certain areas of Yakutia and also high costs of uh, delivered uh, fuel and power generation. So I think you can uh, work with the Minister of Transport. I'm sure they have uh, the maximum competencies in terms of logistics uh, and uh, relevant uh, road maps, including ice roads uh, and also the, uh, the updated information on uh, river transport. I would like to summarize my presentation. As I said already, we have this special active off-road vehicle, and we would like to get feedback from the regions, from the users, and to take them into account when we start industrial production. Поэтому мы бы хотели создать качественный продукт, so we would like to have a, a quality product uh, to transport cargoes and people uh, with this uh, increase, uh, increased uh, uh, load uh, capacity. It uh, would reduce the cost of transportation and make Arctic more accessible. We want it uh, to be serial, we want it to be access, uh, affordable, and, and we want it to be reliable uh, to use it under harsh climatic conditions. We understand that Yakutia, this is the region where uh, we can get good uh, data on uh, exploitation, and we would like to cooperate with local institutions and also to get, again get, get feedback from uh, the users so that we could uh, respond to it uh, in our final product. And our many solutions actually were based on uh, such feedback. 
будем рады сотрудничеству. So we are open for cooperation in the frame of this signed agreement, and we are ready to share information and also to produce the product which could be useful for this region and will make life easier for people and companies. And I'm ready to give my contacts to the organizers. Thank you. Да, конечно, но я так понимаю, что мы все заключительными репликами сейчас So I think that, yes, we are giving our uh, closing notes. I'm very grateful to the organizers of the forum and of, of this session because uh, during public events and this is at like backstage we uh, receive new information some really unexpected and new establishment contacts and the cooperation of all the participants uh, the stakeholders in the Arctic в этом смысле ну вот, так, такие обмены они позволяют собирать нужные компетенции для глобальных серьезных задач в Арктике. А, давайте я сейчас... Вы нас так немножко заинтриговали своим выступлением, но есть возможность которые вы talk a little bit in more details on the uh, current legislation. We understand that that must be a lot of information, multi-layered information, but can you be uh, more specific? Расскажите, пожалуйста, чуть подробнее, что конкретно, что конкретно сейчас, скажем так, не хватает, и какая вот конкретная работа есть в documents lack and what amendments should be introduced. А то мы тут все встрепенулись. Да. А, да Расспросить, это... расспросить все... если бы вы были рядом, мы бы на вас все накинулись. Но так как вы не рядом, то накидываюсь я. Это, безусловно, можно и нужно выносить на обсуждение. В этом нет никакого секрета. Мы бы взаимодействовали с Российским университетом, провели такую работу и... Мы оценивали в основном документы, которые регламентируют порядок проведения мониторинга, да, и в частности это свод правил 25 основания на вечно мерзлых грунтах. И мы, учитывая, что участвовали в геотехническом мониторинге объектов, построенных в креолитозоне, наверное, с 2012 года, of the sites built on permafrost uh, starting from 2012, and we analyzed all the data, and we understood that the uh, regularity of the monitoring actually uh, do not allow to spot in time uh, negative uh, consequences. Тем не менее, бывают техногенные аварии, которые из-за которых процессы могут развиваться стремительно и устранение этих последствий занимает достаточно много времени. Вот на шестой конференции геокриологов Московского университета, которая проходила в июне прошлого года, был как раз доклад из Якутии, который приводил очень хороший пример последствий аварии на Якутской ТЭЦ. Это были практически горячие воды. Температуры грунтов они достигали 50 градусов, наверное, по Цельсию, причем на глубинах до 15 метров. И последствия этой аварии, ну, авария, безусловно, была устранена быстро, но мелкие вот эти вот утечки, они ну, в течение двух с половиной лет, наверное, их приходилось устранять. И кажется, что вроде бы там... Это не значительно, да, но подумаешь, но, тем не менее, когда... Несущая способность свай зависит But от when, uh, температуры грунта, да, и 
piles Это depend, может so on, uh, к очень серьезным последствиям. Поэтому мы предлагаем все-таки особо опасные объекты so мониторить why, uh, с той же we... периодичностью, с какой они мониторятся в период строительства. Мы не предлагаем uh, там, that, uh, some, uh, для всех объектов, uh, расположенных в арктической uh, зоне, ввести uh, повышенные требования к мониторингу. Но особо опасные uh, объекты мы считаем, что нужно наблюдать регулярно. И вопрос, который всегда возникает у этих объектов, что это приведет к удорожанию мониторинга, so что не предусмотрены исследования, которые мы хотели бы пригласить и представителей Министерства строительства, Министерства энергетики, экологии, 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 то, что сейчас я могу сказать, и то, что я могу сказать, это что Организаторы этого the forum should also join this discussion. So that's all. Спасибо, да, спасибо за пояснение. Теперь мы Thank you for your comments. Uh, now we, uh, we have a better understanding. Коллеги, кто еще хотел короткую реплику, Владимир, давайте. Да, все же в завершении своего выступления, наверное, завершение. Conclusion of this session, I would like to say that if we go back into history, into history, мощнейший толчок развитию технологий в смежных областях, в том числе промышленности, дал атомный проект. So nuclear projects, uh, they uh, made major breakthroughs in the development of science and exploration. The availability of energy, electricity and heat is the prerequisite for the Arctic development. And And the Kurchatov Institute, Kurchatovsky Institute, Mikhail Antonovich Kulchuk, very attentive to the development of northern territories, especially the development of nuclear energy in these areas. Short remarks here, or somebody from online. If Тогда not, let's uh, conclude our session. I would like to thank all the participants, speakers, uh, audience and media, uh, people who joined to our uh, stream. And, uh, I think that we have uh, identified uh, new directions uh, to be developed and along with our colleagues we have everything, we have human, uh, technological, scientific uh, resources and uh, the will to do so, to improve and to help uh, the develop, uh, development uh, of the Arctic uh, regions. На встречу друг другу. Спасибо огромное, кто присоединился. So thank you very much for people who joined uh, us from different corners of our vast uh, motherland. And so we conclude the work of this session. But the Northern Sustainable Development Forum is continuing. Join our streams and uh, see you later today and tomorrow. Thank you very much and гостями And Северного форума по устойчивому развитию. Visit other events.